Um, IQ, uh, give me give me your uh, feedback and and everything on uh, what you thought of the interview. I mean, his point of view is that Donald Trump was on the right track, but he's not. He's failing it at the moment. My my point of view is that the reason he's failing is not because he is failing; it's because they are forcing him to be fail, to fail. I mean, to have 95 or 98 percent of the media for four years against you, no matter what you do, and the Democrats literally are a fascist organization who literally allowed the burning in 70 states, 70 cities in the United States of America. And most of the people who suffered from the Holocaust were small people, mostly, in fact, uh, American blacks, Asians, and Hispanics. The very people that the Black Lives Matter said they were going to protect. This is the anomaly. This is the hypocrisy. This is the sickening part about America today. 47 to 8, 48 percent, according to the figures, were white people, young white people. What were they doing? What do they know about slavery? Zero. What do they know about the Constitution? Zero. What do you know? Do they know about the Civil War? Zero. Why? Because they were never educated in these things. For 60 years, first they started with taking God out of the equation, then took out religion out of the equation, then they took out everything else. Nothing to stand for the flag, not to kneel, not to allow to kneel. Well, what are we, what are we here? Uh, in cuckoo land? In which kind of universe are we? But that's what happened. You have generation after generation of the least educated Americans in the history of the Republic. I'm not talking about the ones who study in sciences. The social sciences, there is no such thing as a social science. They teach them zero. They're stupid people. The teachers are even more stupid, and the professors are even worse. I don't know what Dan thinks. Do you agree with me or not? Wow. <laughs> I, I know. That's what I was saying. <laughs> wow. You were, you were on your case today, weren't you, IQ? Yes. <laughs> listen, I, am, listen, I have just not today sent my last uh, documents for my green card. Yes. No, so of you. course, I'm a go on, on a war path. I'm on a war path because I'm more American before I even land in America. Yeah. Okay. So answer your question, Jim. <laughs> yes. Um, go ahead. <laughs> I, I think I think that the um, uh, the man makes some really valid points. Not all of them, but some valid points. IQ and I were talking before the show started. Yes. And I said that uh, um, two of my contacts for the White House I wrote to over the weekend and suggested that the president needs to change his tone and the direction of his tone. I'm not going to tell you what I said. Yeah. Uh, I just hope that, the, that they get it to the president. I'll be speaking to them tomorrow. But uh, if he does what I suggest, which will not necessarily be a radical departure for him, but would allow him the opportunity to rebond with his electorate and to the Democrats who do not like the left-leaning direction of the, of the Democratic Party. I believe, and I said to the two ladies, I believe Mr. Trump has the ability and the opportunity to have the greatest comeback win the election of the presidency in the history of our country. For those people who think that he's done, I don't think he is. There were, I was doing an interview this morning, and I was asked, so what do you think about the rumor that uh, Trump's going to hang it up? Yes. I said, I said, Mr. Trump is not a quitter. That's not in his mental capacity. So the idea who are, people were saying, hey, He's going to hang it up. Not going to happen. He, if he's going down, he's going to go down fighting for what he believes. But I, I really believe that the media has helped dupe the American people. And they have supported not only the Black Lives Matter, but Antifa and a bunch of other organizations 
and created as if they are really good for America type people. And in fact, I think they're not. Um, but the headlines, as IQ is saying, are, are constantly about all the things that Donald Trump has done. The one thing I would point out that wasn't mentioned in today's program, but it gives me grave concern. Over the last three weeks, the ability of Twitter to censor the president's messages. That too. And to label them whatever they want to label them, uh, I think is uh, a serious concern because we're seriously affecting the freedom of speech of the president of the United States. That can't be a good thing. And yet at the same time, Jim, look what's happening to mainstream corporate America who is taking their advertising off of Facebook. Yes, I uh, I have noticed that. That has been a uh, kind of kind of an underlying story. I mean, Coca Cola. There's nothing more American than Coca Cola. They've taken all their advertising off of Facebook. That's clearly sending should be sending a message to Facebook that they don't like what's going on. And other other major major uh, companies are pulling their advertising off of Facebook. Uh, and you know. I go back to the famous movie called Network, when the guy stands up and goes over the window and raises the window and says, I'm mad as hell, I'm not going to do this anymore. <laughs> yes. I, I, I think there are a growing number of people in America who are about to get on board that train. But that's my opinion. Dan, question. So you sure. Know, you know about DC more than I do. If Americans, who are mostly at the moment, by the way, the American white people are now just going below the 50%. I don't know if you heard that. The, the white people in America are just about the 50% of the American population. Well, whoever you're getting that information from is bogus. It's 63%. That's what I knew. Sorry, that's what I knew before. But then somebody said, and the, anyway, it's not important. The important is this. If they go, they stop going to the football games. They stop going to all these people who kneel. What will happen to these places? Well, that's a good question. I, 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 uh, I would add another question to that. With this significant decline of what's happened as far as sequestering and, and closing down, what's going to happen to the small churches in America, what about the small Baptists and uh, black churches in the neighborhood that only had 200 people or 300 people in the congregation, and they haven't been able to go to church? What's going to happen to the small churches in the country? I think that they're going to go out of business. And what does that mean to the country? I don't think that's a positive thing. So I was talking to my sister last night in Columbus. And uh, they just opened up limited participation in their Catholic church uh, after being closed for three months. And uh, the turnout is very, very low. Um, you know, I, I, this is where I would disagree with our guest on Tulsa. The, the, the interpretation on the part of the media was that the reason why the turnout wasn't full was because people have lost interest in Donald Trump. Yet, the media didn't report that Fox News, for two hours when they broadcast the meeting, had 6.7 million viewers, the largest ever in the history of the Fox network. And on general internet, there were over 4 million viewers. So we had 11 million, almost 11 million people who watched the meeting in Tulsa. So I, I, part of me wants to believe, Jim, that there is a, a much larger number of people that are still supporter of Donald Trump. And, you know, I have to, like IQ, I have to question the, the sanity of some of these people because if you think about it, Joe Biden, who's been holed up in a hole in his basement, 
the poll the pollsters are saying that the voters prefer uh, Biden over Trump by 15 points. There's not a logical person, I think, in the country who would believe that number. Well, and they, they can something else that no one seems to be pointing out as far as this Tulsa rally is concerned is that you could reserve tickets and things online. Mm-hmm. And there are a vast amount of people that have that that have basically put together that uh, a lot of people said that they were going to go, and they had no intention of going. And so well, it, they think, oh, well, there's a million people going to show up, and no, because a whole bunch of people reserved tickets and then just didn't go as a way to screw him over and him not have this crowd and then they go ha it's over people don't like trump well right. I don't know about that i agree i agree so but uh but I, I i will have to say but 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 before we before we wrap things up here uh i i i agree with uh what you were saying there dan uh iq was on his was on his game today Yes. Listen, how is it conceivable that 2% of the American people who are terrorists are terrorizing 98%? And yet the 98%, 70% of them own 300 million firearms, more than the armed forces of the United States of America. How is it conceivable that these people are being covered or, uh, you know, terrorized? It doesn't make sense to me. If somebody is coming to my area and they're a gun holder, I will come out with my gun and say, make my day. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah. Well, any, any, I, I read a lot of stories. Any place where a shop owner uh, was, was about to be attacked, uh, wherever he was in the country, if he had a gun, the, 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 Looters just walked away. Yes. He, he displayed... cowards. They are cowards. All of them are cowards. They pick on the people who are without arms, the people who are weak. This is the whole point of Black Lives Matter. It's got nothing to do with the black lives. It's nothing to do with law and order. It's nothing to do with justice. It's to do with robbery. Yeah. Agree. Absolutely. Well, uh, and as... what we all agree. As, as we wrap up here, uh, let's start with Dan. Uh, I noticed you've got some audio podcasts and things you're doing now. Tell us about this. I just started last week. Uh, I had a lot of people who, as you know, I write a lot of commentary. Uh, and I did. I normally do one to one and a half a week. And uh, so that's about six a month. In, in May and June, I did each, each month I did 15 commentaries. So people were saying, we can't keep up reading all your stuff. Is there a possibility that you could do an audio version that we could listen to in our car or whatever? So last week I started my first um, podcast on SoundCloud. And the name of the, of the, sound, of the blog, the uh, podcast is called What's On My Mind. So you can go to SoundCloud.com, look up What's On My Mind, by Dan Perkins, and you can get last week's issue. Every every Wednesday at 7.30 in the morning, a new item is posted, and um, it's based on commentaries that are out there at the moment. So uh, if you didn't get a chance to read it, you can listen to it. And uh, I've gotten, I told IQ before we started, uh, I've got, in less than, with one, one podcast, I've picked up 12 followers, and I've gotten uh, 17 wow. likes, and that was just one 10-minute, less than 10-minute podcast. So um, I must have found a nerve somewhere with no promotion. <laughs> so we'll see what we can do with it. That's so I awesome. get a hog, more, I get a hog more than America's media. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, IQ, as we wrap up here with you, uh, how do we find you online, get your stuff, everything else? 
as usual, it's just Google my name, Al Rasuli, A L R A S W O L I, and uh, you you have a lot of fun, a lot of articles, a lot of videos, a lot of audios, and it was fantastic show today. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Dan. You bet, sir. And uh, I will uh, talk to you guys soon. You guys have yourself a wonderful day. You take care. Good, Thank you, guys. Good Fourth of July. Thank you as well. Yes. Uh, that is that. We are going to wrap things up here and get the hell out of here and uh, go back to the replay.